Hi, welcome to this USAR 2020 presentation, a risk-based assessment for R package accuracy. My name is Andy Nichols. I am the lead for something called the R Validation Hub. Um, I will be introducing that hub today before handing over to Julianne Manitz to talk about the risk-based assessment framework that the hub has uh, jointly helped develop. Um, we are here representing both the hub and the executive committee. Um, the names of which you can see on the slide. So that's Doug Kelkoff, Yinong Zhang, Lynn Taylor, Joe Rickett, Min Lee, Kevin Anderson, and Julianne and myself. We have included an abstract um, for our, our talk. I won't read that out. Um, it's a short presentation and we'll be covering it in the next couple of slides. But the format of this presentation will be such that I'll just introduce the hub and what we do, and then I'll hand over to Julianne to introduce the particular challenge that we face within the pharmaceutical industry and to talk a bit more about the framework that we've um, developed for, um, for our packages. So the R Validation Hub um, has been in existence for around about two years, coming up to two years now. We are an R Consortium funded uh, working group. And um, over the two years that we've been in existence, we've grown to the point where we have uh, around about 100 members um, from 50 different um, organizations. We, we work within the pharmaceutical industry um, and therefore most of those organizations are made up of pharmaceutical companies, um, but it also includes independents, contract research organizations, and uh, regulatory bodies as well. It's a large, large group of people. Um, our mission within the biopharmaceutical industry is to enable the use of R, in particular in a regulatory setting, so where the output may be used in submissions to regulatory agencies. This is something that has been uh, a challenge for a long time, and it's not an area where R is actually uh, use very much today. So before I hand over to Julianne, um, just want to let you know a little bit more about the Arvalation Hub and, uh, uh, and give you some information um, should you wish to find out more. So we have a website www.pharmar.org. Um, from that website you will find uh, blog posts giving you up-to-date information about what the various streams are working on within the R Validation Hub. Um, you'll find this presentation and, and previous presentations that we've delivered over the last couple of years. And crucially, you'll find the white paper um, upon which all of this work is uh, based. So if you want a bit more detail around some of the things that Julianne's going to be talking about, um, please navigate to the website and have a look at the, the, the white paper. Uh, Julianne's also going to be introducing a, a couple of tools. In particular, she's going to talk about an R package called Risk Metric. If you want to um, have a look at that package, then you can navigate to our GitHub page, which you can get to from the, um, from the main website. Um, and on that GitHub page, you'll also find various other resources and things that we've developed. And soon you will be able to find a risk assessment application. So that's a shiny app um, that implements um, the risk metric uh, package and allows you to add comments to that and generate reports um, for, uh, for documenting the reviews that you performed. Um, all of which Julianne will talk about in the next few slides. So at this point, I'm gonna end um, and hand over to Julianne to give, deliver the more interesting part of the presentation. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Andy, for the introduction. My name is Joan Manitz. I'm a member of the R Validation Hub Executive Committee, and I help with the communication. Working with R in pharma means working in a regulated industry. We are facing a number of different regulations, and here I just want to mention two of them. The first one is the Good Clinical Practice Guideline by the International Conference on Harmonization of Technical Requirements for Registration of Pharmaceuticals for Human Use, short ICH. This is an international quality standard for conducting clinical trials in general. They state that software use should be reliable and the documentation of appropriate software testing procedures should be available. 
On top of that, in the United States, FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, has similar guidelines and further specifies validation as establishing documented evidence, which provides a high degree of assurance that a specific process consistently produces a product meeting its de predetermined specification and quality attributes. In other words, software validation needs to establish three things, accuracy, reproducibility and traceability. The App Validation Hub focuses on accuracy because reproducibility and traceability refer to environment in which the statistical software is executed, means no difference between R and SAS. Validating R can refer to different things. So when talking about R, we can refer to core R, which is the base product owned by the R Foundation. This includes the base and recommended packages that include packages such as survival, MGCV and R part. So you can do already a lot with just the base core R packages. However, to make real good use of R, it's essential to use community contributed packages, which may have different owners, varying quality and varying popularity. Regarding the validity of Core R, the R Foundation fortunately provides a guidance document on regulatory compliance and validation issues. This document provides details on their software development lifecycle and good practices that ensure accuracy. For instance, hiring of high, highly qualified individuals, proper maintenance of R source code and control of releases testing of each R release against known data and known results, as well as the identification of issues and resolution prior to release. It can be therefore concluded that there is a minimal risk in using Core R for regulatory analysis and reporting. That, it that is great news. However, for contributed packages, things get a little bit more tricky. We know that for each package on CRAN, that it has been had to pass a series of technical checks, but that does not necessarily guarantee the accuracy of that package. One way to assure accuracy would be to develop your own tests. However, we already know that the maintainer of the package provides their tests. And in addition, popular packages go through some type of community driven uh, peer review testing. And that, considering the R Validation Hub, is suggesting a risk-based approach to evaluate the accuracy of contributed R packages. Let me walk through such a, the suggested framework. In the first step, we would, we would qualify whether a package is intended for use, means the user is directly loading it into the R section, or whether it is a dependency and indirect import through these packages. If it is a dependency, maybe uh, minimum checks for suitability are enough. If it is intended to use, we further process the package in a risk assessment. In the first step, we figure out whether it we want to make use of a statistical method implemented that also includes algorithms and things like that, or if it is just non-statistical, such as data manipulation, application interface, communication, or plotting. If we have a non-statistical package, the establishment of various metrics, uh, the measurement through various metric might be sufficient. So one bucket would be checking with the good practice of maintenance has been is performed. And that can include existence of vignettes, websites, news feeds, form a mechanism of bug tracking, or whether the source code has been public publicly maintained. In addition, the community usage uh, should be assessed in a risk metric. We assume that the more exposure a package has by the user community, the more ad hoc testing has been performed. Therefore, the better the quality. 
If the requirements are not met, we can always go back and check the test coverage by the maintainer or add even more pet testing by ourselves. Based on that risk assessment, we should be able to determine whether a package of interest fulfills the requirement accuracy for a given use case or not. You may require higher standards for submission relevant work while accepting lower standards for exploratory past hoc analyses. So this is all very theoretical. For practical purposes, there are fortunately already tools which are implementing those particular metrics we have been talking about. Let me introduce you to the R package risk metric, which has been led, uh, whose development has been led by colleagues co-authoring this presentation. I selected a few packages with uh, different popularity in order to illustrate how it works. Our risk metric is itself not yet on CRAN, but can be also included. Utils is a R core package. GGplot2 is a very popular tidyverse package. HMISC is a little bit more old school. Surfminer is less popular, but well established in pharma. And Cox Robust has been the oldest package as the on CRAN at the time of selection. First risk metric is referencing the selected packages and with the call of the function package, package assess, the package metadata is assessed and the package metrics are stored. This information is then converted into a numeric, numeric score value between 0 and 1, where 0 refers to poor and 1 to great quality. Finally, each package's risk is summarized in a weighted sum of assessment scores. The weights for each matrix can be determined by the organization. As an output, we get a number of metrics for evaluating good practice for maintenance, the number of downloads for community usage and test coverage, as well as the overall risk score. I will leave you with this short introduction. Hope that you can answer the question whether it's time to integrate our properly integrate are uh, into pharma and want to strongly encourage you to get more information from our website pharmaal.org. Uh, please feel free to sign up for the mailing list to stay up to date and any feedback and experience on the implementation of the framework in your organization are very welcome. Thanks a lot for your interest and attention. Bye.